So the last talk is Round Optimal Black Box Protocol Compilers by Yuvali Shai, Dakshi Takurana, Mitsahai, and Akshay Srinivasan. And Akshay is giving yeah. the talk. So uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, so uh, I'm here to present one more talk with the title Round Optimality. So I'm going to present about Round Optimal Black Box Protocol Compilers. This is based on joint work with Yuvali Shai, Dakshi Takurana, and Amit Sahai. So let me start with the customary slide, introducing secure multi-party computation. So we have several parties. Each party has its own private input. And uh, the parties also have, as a common input, some description of some function f. And they wish to compute the output of this function applied on their private inputs. So for this purpose, the parties run a distributed protocol. And we want this protocol to satisfy two properties. The first is, of course, the correctness, which states that at the end of the protocol, we want all the parties to be able to compute the output of this function applied on their private inputs. The second property is, of course, the security requirement, which states that uh, even if a subset of these parties get corrupted by a centralized adversary, we want these corrupted parties jointly not to learn anything about the honest party's inputs except what is leaked by the output of this functionality. So typically, uh, there are two types of adversaries that have been considered in the cryptographic uh, literature. So the first adversarial model is the semi-honest adversary, where the corrupted parties follow the protocol specification, but try to learn additional information by examining the transcript. And generally uh, speaking, uh, semi-honest adversaries are easier to protect against and protocols that are secure against semi-honest adversaries are much more efficient. The more stronger adversarial model is the malicious adversary where the corrupted parties could deviate arbitrarily from the protocol specification and try to break the security. And uh, malicious adversaries are harder to protect against. And protocols that are secure against malicious adversaries tend to use sophisticated cryptographic tools and techniques. So in this work, we are interested in building a protocol compiler. So let me explain what that is. So the role of a protocol compiler is to take a protocol uh, for, which is semi-harness secure and compute some functionality f prime and transform it into another protocol for computing a function f that is secure against malicious adversaries. So how are f and f prime related? So typically for every f that we want to securely compute against malicious adversaries, there is a related functionality f prime for which it's sufficient to construct a protocol against semi-honest adversaries. In certain special cases, this f and f prime will coincide, but in general, they need not coincide. So as protocol designers, our task is much simplified because we only need to construct a semi-honest protocol, which is usually an easier task for computing this function f prime. And the protocol compiler does most of the heavy lifting in order to protect against the much stronger malicious adversary. So in this work, we are interested in constructing an efficient protocol compiler. And let me explain what I mean by efficiency in this con context. So in this work, we are interested in uh, optimizing three main parameters. So the first parameter is to preserve the round complexity, meaning that the compiled protocol must have the same number of rounds as that of the initial protocol. In other words, in order to achieve malicious security, the compiler should not add additional rounds. The second requirement is that of black box use, meaning that the compiled protocol must make black box use of the initial protocol. That is, it uses the algorithms that implement the initial protocol as oracles. It can give inputs, get outputs, but is otherwise agnostic to how uh, the initial protocol is implemented. And finally, we want the compiler to make use of simple cryptographic tools and avoid sophisticated and less efficient primitives. Okay, so these are the three requirements that we strive to achieve in this work. Before we move on, let me uh, explain a couple of prior approaches in constructing this protocol compiler, starting with the seminal work of Goldrick, Mikali, and Wigderson. So at a very high level, uh, 
it takes a semi harness secure protocol and it attaches a non interactive zero knowledge proof showing that each of these messages are correctly computed so this prevents a malicious adversary from deviating in the protocol specification and hence you can show that this compiler is secure against malicious adversaries of course i'm um, sweeping a lot of details under the rug but this is the high level idea so a nice feature of this compiler is that it is around preserving but of course it is non black box because in order to generate this zero knowledge proofs one requires the code of the underlying um, initial protocol another uh, popular compiler uh, was proposed by ishai prabhakaran and sahai in crypto 2008 and it's called as the ips compiler and unlike the gmw compiler this compiler is a black box protocol compiler that is it makes the uh, black box use of the initial protocol but unfortunately it resulted in an increase in the round complexity and it required stronger cryptographic tools namely in order to instantiate this compiler one requires a malicious secure oblivious transfer so for instance if your goal is to construct a malicious secure oblivious transfer then this compiler is not so useful because it requires a malicious secure oblivious transfer as its building block and finally uh, a technical uh, issue about this compiler is that it requires the semi harness secure protocol to satisfy a stronger security property namely it requires it to satisfy adaptive security with erasures okay so given the state of the art let me give you our results so we give a protocol compiler that is round optimal that is if you give a round optimal semi harness secure protocol it compiles it into a round optimal malicious secure protocol it is black box and it makes use of simple cryptographic tools or setup that is it either works in the random oracle model or it uh, works in the uh, one out of two random ot correlation setup where we now have many uh, efficient tools for generating such ot correlation setup without much communication using the uh, machinery of pcgs okay so using our compiler we obtain several interesting applications and i'll give you uh, the applications in the two party and the multi party setting starting with the two party setting so starting with the two round semi harness two party computation protocol we get the following results in the random oracle model so firstly we get a two round malicious ot so all these results make black box use of this underlying semi harness two pc we get a two round non interactive secure computation where it's a two party protocol where only one party receives the output at the end and we also get a two round two sided non interactive secure computation protocol where both the parties at the end of the protocol get the output okay so we get all these results by making black box use of a two round semi harness two pc in the random oracle model so prior to our work uh, uh, you needed some stronger security properties from the underlying semi harness to pc such as pseudo randomness of the first round message whereas our work does not require such additional properties from the semi harness protocol and it can start with any semi harness protocol and one more observation is that uh, we can actually replace uh, the random oracle model with a fixed polynomial sized random ot correlation setup and the only caveat is that we need to start with a semi malicious 2 pc instead of a semi harness 2 pc so a semi malicious 2 pc is a one where the adversary still follows the protocol but could choose an arbitrary random tape and there is actually a very simple transformation uh, where you can actually construct a uh, a semi malicious 2 pc in the random oracle model based on semi harness 2 pc so this is how we can start with a semi harness 2 pc in the random oracle setting but if you don't have a random oracle we need to start with the semi malicious 2 pc so these are the results in the two party setting in the multi party setting we get the following results so starting with a two round semi harness ot protocol in the random oracle model we get a three round malicious secure mpc protocol for computing arbitrary functions and for arbitrary number of parties 
And the round optimality of this construction follows from an earlier work of Applebaum et al., who showed that one cannot use two-round semi-honest OT in a black box ma uh, manner to construct a two-round MPC, even semi-honest MPC. So this uh, uh, lower bound also extends in the random oracle model. So even in the random oracle model, you cannot use a two-round semi-honest OT to construct a two-round semi-honest MPC in a black box fashion. Whereas in this work, we get a three-round malicious MPC from a two-round semi-honest OT. However, this uh, lower bond doesn't work in the OT correlations model. So starting with a two-round semi-malicious MPC protocol that satisfies certain natural properties that I wouldn't go too much into the details. Uh, in the OT correlations model, we get a two-round malicious MPC. Okay, so the prior work of Ishai et al. from crypto 2021 required complex multi-party correlations, whereas we remove the need for this complex correlations and just require standard OT correlations. Okay, so, but in this talk, I'll focus on one such application that is to construct a two-round malicious OT in the random oracle model, making black box use of a two-round semi-honest two-piece. This is what will be seeing, but as you might already have inferred, two round semi-honest two PC for arbitrary functions can be constructed in a black box manner using Yavo's garble circuits from a two round semi-honest OT protocol. So this gives a black box transformation from two round semi-honest OT to two round malicious OT in the random Oracle model. So this was not known before. Okay, so before we move on, let me quickly give you a brief recap of the IPS compiler, which is the starting point of our work as well. So the IPS compiler consists of the following components. So it makes use of an outer protocol. And for this purpose, let's fix an outer protocol where there are two clients, M servers, and we require a two round client server outer protocol. So uh, for the purpose of constructing an oblivious transfer, it's sufficient for this uh, outer protocol to compute the OT functionality. Specifically, the receiver client has a choice bit B, let me denote it by X, and the sender client has two strings M0, M1, jointly denoted by Y. So in this two round client server outer protocol, we have the following interaction pattern. In the first round, the, client, the, the receiver client and the sender client secret shares its private inputs using a specialized secret sharing scheme and sends the corresponding shares to the servers. In the second round, the servers apply certain function, let me denote the computation done by the IH server by SI, on the shares received from the clients to compute these ZIs. And the servers send these ZIs to the receiver client. This happens in the second round. And after, uh, the, 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 after this, the receiver applies a decoding functionality on the ZIs to get MB, which is the output of the OT functionality. So we want this outer protocol to satisfy malicious security uh, against any adversary that corrupts either one of these two clients and a constant fraction of these servers. So let's say that this fraction is one third, so it should remain secure against a malicious adversary that uh, corrupts uh, one third of the servers and either one of these clients. And such a protocol was constructed in the work of Ishai, Kushlovitz, and Paskin in 2010. And this is in the information theoretic setting. It does not involve any cryptographic operations. So this is the first component. The second component of the IPS compiler is an inner protocol which for this purpose, let's just keep it as a two round semi-honest protocol. Actually, it requires some certain additional properties. We'll come to that towards the end. So it's a two round semi-honest protocol where the functionality that is computed by this protocol is the server computation of the outer protocol. So that is, you have M instances of these in the protocol where the ith instance computes SI. And final component is what is called as the watch list protocol. And I will explain the role of the watch list in the next few slides. So given these components, let's take a look at how does the IPS compiled protocol look like. So you have the two clients, uh, receiver and the sender. The, 
the clients first uh, secret share their private inputs to X1 to XM and Y1 to YM respectively using the secret sharing scheme that was used in the outer protocol. Now the outer protocol had the help of these servers which could help in the computation, but in without the servers, how do the clients emulate the outer protocol? And this is where the inner protocol comes into picture. So for each one of these servers in the outer protocol, the, the parties, uh, the, namely the receiver and the sender client, run the corresponding instance of the inner protocol, where the private inputs to this instance correspond to the shares that the parties send to the servers. Okay, so at the end of this emulation, the receiver client obtains the ZIs uh, from the inner protocol and it can compute the output. But this satisfies correctness, but what about security? So let's consider a malicious uh, adversary that corrupts the receiver. Notice that these inner protocols are only guaranteed to be secure against semi-honest adversaries, whereas a malicious, adverse, uh, malicious receiver could deviate in each one of these inner protocol instances and break the security of this pro uh, inner protocol instance. And uh, recall that the outer protocol was guaranteed to only be secure as long as a constant fraction of the servers were corrupted. But here, all the servers are corrupted. Therefore, the malicious receiver can trivially break the sender security. So in order to make this compiler secure, we somehow need to ensure that a malicious adversary can only cheat in a constant fraction of these server emulations. And this is where the watchlist protocol comes into picture. So in parallel to this emulation, the receiver and the sender run a specialized watchlist protocol that is computing the following functionality. So in this functionality, the receiver sends xi comma ri, where ri is the randomness used for generating the messages in the ith instance of the inner protocol. And xi is of course its private input that it uses in the ith instance. And the sender on the other hand, chooses a random subset K of certain size. Let's ignore the size for a moment. It's some subset K. And the watchlist protocol delivers Xi comma Ri for each I in K to the sender. Now, given this information, the sender checks if for each I in K, whether Xi comma Ri is a, is a valid input comma randomness pair that explains the transcript that was obtained from the malicious receiver. If any of these checks fail, then the sender aborts. So let's see how this watchlist protocol prevents a malicious adversary in cheating in more than a constant fraction of these server executions. So let's consider this malicious adversary, which is cheating, uh, which is corrupting the receiver. So if this adversary cheats in many executions, then since this K is randomly chosen, it has a non-zero intersection with this cheating executions with overwhelming probability. Therefore, this cheating will be detected by the uh, sender and hence it will uh, abort. On the other hand, if this malicious receiver is cheating only in a small number of these executions, then we can rely on the security of the outer protocol, which is anyway secure against a constant fraction of server corruptions. So this is the main idea behind uh, the IPS compiler and the watchlist protocol is used to prevent a malicious adversary in cheating in many uh, inner protocol executions. But unfortunately, the watchlist protocol's construction requires use of malicious OT. Whereas our goal was to construct a malicious OT, whereas this watchlist protocol requires use of malicious OT. So in our work, we give a new watchlist protocol where you don't require use of malicious OT. So this is the key uh, technical contribution. So our solution uh, relies on the following crucial observation. Okay, so. Okay. It relies on this observation that this subset K, which was chosen by the sender, need not be kept secret. And in fact, it needs to be randomly chosen after the receiver's message. So this K can be revealed in the clear to the other party. So this is the main observation. So with this observation, 
let me give you a bare bones version of the watch list, uh, which doesn't satisfy all the required properties and tell you how to uh, uh, compile it to a, whatever uh, the required solution. Okay, so let's see uh, a minimalistic implementation of the watch list protocol. So we have the receiver and the sender. So once the receiver generates its first round message in the in a protocol, it also generates a commitment to all uh, xi comma ri. Recall that xi was the private input and ri was the randomness that was used to generate the inner protocol messages. So it generates these m commitments and sends these commitments over to the uh, sender. The sender now chooses this random subset k and sends it in the clear to the other party. Now the uh, receiver opens these indices corresponding to this uh, set K and the sender again performs the same check. Now, again, notice that if a malicious receiver is cheating in many inner protocol executions, then since this K is chosen after it has committed to all the inner protocol messages, it will again have a non-trivial, uh, non-zero intersection with overwhelming probability, and we can again catch uh, cheating uh, adversary. But this works. But what is the problem with this approach? That it results in an increase in round complexity. That is, in order to check the receiver's message, we need three rounds, and in order to check the sender's message, we need another three rounds of this watch list protocol run in the opposite direction. So even if you have a two round semi honest two PC protocol, this protocol results in a six round malicious two PC. So how do we reduce the number of rounds? And here the main observation is that K is random and it's in fact public coin. So in the random Oracle model, we can apply the Fiat Shamir paradigm. That is the, the receiver, once it has generated its commitments, hashes these commitments using an appropriate hash function H to obtain the set K. And it opens this commitments corresponding to this set K and this can all be done in parallel. So it need not uh, wait for any messages from the, uh, from the other party. And so this results in a one round watch list protocol in the random Oracle model. So you, in parallel to the first round receiver message, you also send this uh, messages in the one round watch list. Similarly, the sender does uh, same thing. And we have uh, a two round malicious uh, two PC in the random Oracle model, starting with any two round semi honest two PC. Okay, so this is the key idea behind our work. Uh, so if H is uh, modeled as a random Oracle, then you can actually show that this is secure. Of course, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, this IPS compiler required the semi honest protocol to satisfy additional security property, namely adaptive security with erasures. And let me tell you uh, why this is needed first and tell you how we remove uh, the need for this adaptive security uh, towards the end. Okay, so. So let's uh, say that uh, there is a malicious adversary that is corrupting the sender. And say that this malicious adversary deviates only in the first inner protocol execution. So since this uh, deviates only in the first inner protocol execution, this deviation will not be detected by the watch list with non-negligible probability. So here, we are still fine because we, since the number of executions where the adversary has cheated is small and our outer protocol is secure against a constant fraction of these executions. So we must be able to rely on the security of the outer protocol. But a technical issue that comes up here is that in order to use the security of the outer protocol, we require the output that a honest receiver obtains from this execution where the adversary has cheated. And for this purpose, the IPS uh, compiler required the adaptive uh, security with erasures from this inner protocol so that they could compute the output that an honest receiver obtains from any execution where the adversary has cheated. 
So once they detect a cheating, they corrupt this and uh, they get the input and the randomness that was used in that particular execution so that that enables them to compute the output. But here we uh, uh, we require uh, we are required to use only uh, inner protocol where which is only semi honest secure. In order to do this, uh, we actually consider a stronger outer protocol. So, what is the property that is required from the stronger outer protocol? So, recall that this. Uh, let's consider uh, some constant fraction of these server corruptions. And these corrupted servers could send an arbitrary second round message to the receiver. So we want a stronger outer protocol to satisfy the following error correction property. Namely, whatever be the messages that a malicious server sends in the second round, the output of the decoder should be the same when we replace these corrupted server messages with some default symbol, let's say the bot symbol. So if the if the outer protocol satisfies the stronger error correction property, then we don't need the inner protocol to satisfy adaptive security. Because whatever be the uh, value that malicious server sends in the second round, you can obtain the same output with, by just replacing that with the bot symbol. So this allows us to uh, uh, rely only on a semi-honest secure inner protocol. And in our work, we give a construction of such a stronger outer protocol that is secure against a slightly weaker form of adversaries called as pairwise verifiable adversaries. And we show that this pairwise verifiable security is sufficient to instantiate the IPS compiler. And we give a construction of this protocol based on bivariate polynomials. I wouldn't have time to go into the details. I encourage you to look into the paper for the details of this construction and the definition of pairwise verifiable adversaries. Okay, so to conclude, we gave a round optimal uh, construction of two-party and multi-party protocols in the random oracle or in the OT correlations model that made black box use of a semi-honest or semi-malicious protocols. And our construction can be viewed as a normal twist to the IPS compiler, wherein we strengthen the requirements of the outer protocol in order to weaken the, uh, the security requirements of the inner protocol. And some of the open questions are to remove the need for random oracle and uh, give a construction in the CRS model. And are there other applications of the outer protocol? It seems to us that the the notion of pairwise verifiable adversaries is a very natural one, and it's it's likely that there are other applications. And uh, we believe that there is huge potential to uh, optimize the concrete efficiency of our compiler for certain applications. And it would be good to investigate those applications and use our compiler in order to get concretely efficient uh, malicious secure uh, MPC protocols. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, so thanks a lot. So, I mean, you mentioned like the removing the, the needs of random oracle. So I was just wondering how strongly you use it like in the programming or- it's... So we use both programmability as well as the correlation interactability. Right. So, so what is the whole, I mean, like for example, okay, maybe isn't it easier to think to relax the correlation of the functionality, for example, because the same results you have also in the correlation of t, right? Sorry, uh, so you have the same result assuming correlation oblivious transfer and not random oracle. Can you do the same? Yeah, exactly. So we have the same result from starting with a, uh, a pseudo random oblivious transfer, the first round message is pseudo random. Is that what you're no, I was wondering if the setup instead is like correlated, uh, OT, like a bunch of outputs of uh, the OT functional. Oh, you, you mean in the OT correlation? Yeah, 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 yeah. We have this result in the OT correlations model. Right. And I was wondering, like, have you thought about considering a simplified function, OT functionality, for example? Because removing the random oracle looks. Yeah, kind of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It seems like a hard. Yeah, task. exactly. Anyway, yeah, okay. Yeah, but we haven't thought, uh, thought about um, in, uh, relaxing the need for OT correlations, but that's uh, but that's an interesting direction to think about. Okay, so, yeah. thank you. Any other questions? 
Okay, so let's thank Akashai again and all the speaker of the session. Thank you.